Hi everyone, it's Monique from Butterby Scraps and I'm back for week two of our mini album tutorial series. Last week we went over how to construct the pages and the binding of the mini album. We also went over how to attach those pages to the binding. And last but certainly not least, we went over what dimensions uh, to cut all of the tags for the mini album. You will see though that I have removed all of the tags and set them to the side here because the next thing that I like to do is go through and wallpaper the pages of the mini album and I deal with the tags after. Now before I go cutting up my papers though I do like to pick the papers that I want to use for my mini album covers. The reason being I like to wrap the paper around the covers and it's going to take a full 12 by 12 sheet at least for the very front and the very back covers and I really don't want to be choosing the patterns from scraps so I always 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 choose my cover papers first and you've probably already figured out by the title of this mini album series that I have chosen to use the Bow Bunny Weekend Market paper collection. I have both a 6x6 and a 12x12 pad here. And yeah, so let's choose the the papers for the covers. Now on the back cover, I almost always choose like a solid or a tight pattern or something like that. So I mean, this is the paper that was right on top. This screams back cover to me just because not a lot of people look at the back, but I want it to still be somewhat interesting. So I'm just going to put that on my lap here out of camera, <laughs> uh, just to use as the back cover. And then I'm going to flip through and see what I like as the front cover. See, that would make another nice back cover too, if you went sideways. Hmm. Okay, well that's another possibility. And I am looking at the uh, backs of the papers as I flip through here. Man, there's a lot of great back cover pages here. I rarely make the front and back covers the same. I don't know why. That's just my thing, I guess. I'm looking at all these upside down. Okay. So I pulled some papers out here and I'll explain to you what I was thinking. I thought this would make a great back cover. This would make a great back cover. And I like using something that kind of frames, that can be used as a frame for the front cover. So there's a lot of flourishes kind of around the edges of this paper. So that would be a great front cover. This one here, I just like the pattern. I'm thinking it's probably too much for the cover though. This was another thought. I'm thinking going darker. Okay, that's it. That's going to be my front cover. And now the question is, do I want to go with the blue back cover, which looks kind of stark, or this guy? That would make a nice front cover too. And that would go nicely with the blue. <laughs> so I think it's front back or front back and I think I'm gonna go with this one front back because I like that the best so okay so we have our covers chosen I'm gonna set those aside um, I also set aside my inside covers just because um, I usually use a full sheet and I'm not exactly sure how big I'm going to make the covers yet. This is six by nine. So I'm probably going to go with, well, a quarter of an inch on each side. So I'll go with, I'll go with either six and a quarter by six and a half 
by nine and a half inch cover probably because I like to add a half inch this way and a quarter to a half inch this way and actually I think what I'm gonna do is just add a quarter of an inch this way which will make the cover six inches which means the paper for inside the front cover I can make six inches by whatever. So I'm gonna choose my inside covers. The, the reason I'm thinking this through, guys, is I'm gonna choose my inside covers and I'm gonna cut the paper in half because then I still have the other half to use as wallpaper on the mini album. So, I'm a little weird this way. I kinda like to make sure that when I flip it open, I'm not like, I don't know, I, I just, I can't even explain to you. I don't want to go from this paper to something really weird and stark that's going to like shock the eye. So I think I'm actually going to use um, this ruler for the inside cover. So let me get my paper cutter out. Now, this paper was designed this way. However, I want the rulers to go horizontally and doo -doo -doo -doo. I kind of like how there's more words up there so I'm going to use the top half. Not like that matters when I'm cutting it in half anyway. So I'm going to cut this at six inches. And no, I don't normally stack everything on top of each other when I'm working but I did today. Okay, so we got that as the front cover, or inside front. And now for the inside back. I think I'm gonna do something similar and do horizontal stripes. And again, this paper is supposed to run this way, but I'm gonna make it run this way. And now it's to choose, do I want where I want the flourishes? I think I'm gonna use the top half again here. Or I guess that would be considered the right half. I don't know. Anyways, let's slice this row off. Six inches. And there we have the inside back cover. Okay. Now that I have the covers, I can go on to the pages. And because I am showing you my creative process from beginning to end, I did not do any measurement measuring for what size mats these have to be, so I'll do that now. Um, so what I like to do is I like to leave a an eighth of an inch border around all sides. However, where these pockets are, I'm going to cut um, these sections a little bit longer so that I can tuck it in the pocket and glue it down. Just kind of helps secure the pocket down and also prevents you from catching the tags on this little seam here from where the envelope was glued down. So. Let's pull out the ruler and I'll go through the measure measurements. I have a piece of paper on the side here and what I do is I write down the measurements as I go because one, I don't want to have to measure every time I'm cutting a piece of paper for a mat. Um, and two, I just, I, I will never remember throughout the album. I might by page three, but whatever. Anyway, so this is three inches, so we're going to go with two and seven quarter inches seven quarter oh my goodness what planet am i from uh, two and three quarters by of course this is six inches so we're going to go five and three quarters this guy here i'm going to be generous and i'm going to go three and a half inches by five and three quarter and same with this one three and a half inches by five and three quarter now on the back side of page one three and five, they all have the full panel. So we're gonna go the full five and three quarter inch high by eight and three quarter inch wide. 
same with here and there. For this here, I'm going to do the same thing and I'm just going to tuck it into the pocket to glue it down. For the top flap here, I'm going to go with, again, two and three quarter by five and three quarter with a 45 angle. And when I get to cutting that one, I'll actually slow down the video a little bit and show you exactly how I measure and cut to make sure that I have an eighth of an inch all the way around. Now on the back side of pages, this will be two, four, and six. We have this top section, which is, again, the same dimensions as here. So we're going to go three and a half by five and three quarters. These, this flap in this front is six by six, so we're going to go with five and three quarters by five and three quarters. And when we get to here, I'll show you how to get a nice, even um, eighth of an inch gap around that um, cut out there. I don't know why I'm having a brain fart, don't even know what to call it. So now I think what I'm going to do is speed up the camera I'll go through I'll pick my pages probably from the 6x6 mini album because I'm a bit limited on space here and you'll see me cutting the 12x12 sheets um, so yeah I'll speed up the album and you can watch I just kind of flip through mix match um, the different papers and stuff but of course I chose this one here for my inside front cover so what I'm going to do is lay this out just so that I can imagine how it's going to look with this page. Okay, now you're probably wondering what I'm doing. Basically what I did was pull just one of each of the papers out from the 6x6 that you could tell. And I kind of sort them kind of sort of by color so these all have bluish um, these kind of have the reddish and dark tones and these are lighter and honestly this striped one could go either way so actually I think I will put it over here because I like to I don't want to end up with like a blue section a reddish brown section and a yellow section I try to mix all the colors up as I go through so, yeah, I'll speed the camera back up and you can watch me pick and choose um, from all of the different color choices, I guess. Okay, so I just made a realization. That is that I have some 12 by 12 papers here that are not included in the 6 by 6. And there seem to be some 6 by 6 papers that are not included in the 12 by 12. I don't know if that's normal or if I've just used some of this paper because I cannot find any of those books in the 12x12. Now normally I would um, I would use all the large papers for the wallpaper and use some of the smaller papers for the tags. So I think I'm gonna have to make some changes here and use the actual 12 by 12 to determine what papers I want here. Um, yes, not really what I was planning, but isn't that the point of doing a process video so that you can see what happens when I make these discoveries.
Okay, so I'm back and I have chosen all my papers and you guys, I'll show you exactly why I set aside those pieces of paper for my covers. So aside from those two full sheets and two half sheets that I set aside, this is what I have left. And I would have just had bits and pieces uh, for the covers had I not put those papers aside. I probably would have weird shapes and all sorts of stuff. So anyway, I finished cutting all the papers. Now what I do is I like to, you know, clip the corners and I'm going to stick with the scallop because that's what I've used on some of the flaps. So basically I just, I mean, you guys know how to, how to um, clip the corners of your papers. So that's what it's going to end up looking like. Of course, these guys, I only have to do the two corners. Once I'm done doing that, I will go and distress all the pa all the edges of my paper if I like. Okay, so now you saw that I clipped uh, this piece of wallpaper on three corners, of course, because this one's going to get cut off. So what I like to do to cut this angle is I kind of line my paper up where I think I'm going to stick it down. And then I place a little mark, pencil mark, on the edges there. I can draw, let me move this so that you can see what I'm doing. So I can now draw a line, I'm using this side better, draw a pencil line on that angle and I'm just going to put it back on this pocket here. just to make sure that I haven't messed anything up. Yep, looks okay. Okay. Now I really should have gotten rid of this. I'm gonna get rid of my craft sheet. Okay, I got rid of my craft sheet because I want to cut on my cutting sheet here. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to cut one eighth of an inch down from this line that I just drew. The reason I do this is if you were to measure just an eighth of an inch in either direction, draw a line and cut there, you are going to end up with less than an eighth of an inch gap here just because of the angles. Nice thing about the Tim Holtz ruler is you have a line at an eighth of an inch. It's that first little dotted line. You could put it right on top of that pencil line. And then I'm just gonna find my There we go. Now, drum roll please. Let's see how she fits. Nice. I'm happy with that. Before I put you back on high speed, I have to bring up another issue that I found when I was cutting these not so now on all the other pages we've taken these and slid them into the pocket but if you remember when I was measuring for 
for the tags that go in here. We had to make this one narrower because we glued at the top here. Same issue here. We can't stick it in the pocket at the top because there's that glue holding it back. So what I'm going to do is just cut a little notch out of the corner so that the paper sits flush here and then tucks into the pocket. There's that, or if you choose, you can cut this piece of paper to two and three quarter inches and just leave an eighth of an inch gap there. But I'm gonna try the trim and see how it works first because we can always trim it shorter if we like. So we want an eighth of an inch on the end. So we want this to be two and seven eighths. We're gonna have to make this cut. So I'm gonna stick this in here. <clears throat> And, oh, I don't know, don't need to cut down that far. Maybe let's cut a half inch off. So now what I'm doing is I'm just, here's the slit that I cut. Got half an inch there. Let's see how this fits. I don't know guys. What do you think? I think it would... I think just to be consistent that's what I'm going to do. So the last little trick I said that I was going to show you about was how to cut a notch in here so that there's a nice even gap. So what you do is you put your wallpaper into the pocket. You want to have a nice even one eighth of an one eighth of an inch of a gap between the top and that fold line. But you also need to make sure that your wallpaper is centered in the pocket. And actually, maybe what a smarter thing to do rather than just eyeballing it is grab my pencil if I can find it. I lost it, but I got another one here. Okay. So I'm going to mark the center, so it was what, five and three quarters. Okay, there's the center mark. Okay, so you can see there's a nice gap between the fold line and the top of this wallpaper. And let me see if I can I want to make sure that I have my center mark is centered. Okay, that's good. Then you trace this. So now you have a trace line of where that notch is. And we used a one and a half inch punch for that notch. I'm gonna take a one and three quarter inch, put the paper in here, and because of the shadows I have going on, there we go. You want a nice even gap all the way around that pencil line. So yes, I eyeball it and then punch it. And what you're left with is a nice even gap all the way around there.
So what I might actually end up doing too is you can see the tops of these envelopes are a bit of an angle. So I think I'm going to actually just take my ruler and my X-Acto knife and cut those at a bit of an angle. Now, the top of the paper is almost lined up with the edge of, edge of the envelope, so let's, let's try this. So I'm going to measure an eighth of an inch down. Sorry, I don't know if I'm in the shot there. So I'm measuring an eighth of an inch down from the top of this paper edge. And what I'm going to do is just go from Let's see, let me check. I was going to go just from the edge of my corner rounding. Yeah. So I'm going right from the edge here where, right here, that's where my corner ends. Oops, to this pencil line. I almost speared myself on camera. And it's so hard for me to see what I'm doing. Hopefully I don't screw this up because honestly I have no more paper. <laughs> but for every mistake, there's a creative opportunity. And I can always, already think of some creative opportunities I'm going to have to come up with. We'll save those for later, though. Okay. Now, let's see how this lines up. Not too shabby. That, I think, looks a lot better. So I'm going to do that to all three of these sheets. When I'm done that, I'm going to distress all the edges of my wallpaper. I think I'm actually going to use a paper distressor and then use distress ink over top. Okay, so I have finished all the wallpapers for my pages. Um, I haven't stuck anything down yet. So basically what I did was I used the paper distressor on the edges. Then I inked with this black chalk ink by Prima. And then I decided to take a step further and I would, on the odd page and panel, you can probably see the shimmer there, I would spritz a combination of, it was Buccaneer Bay Blue, Moon Shadow Mist, and the Dark Chocolate Truffle, sorry, Starburst Spray by Lindy's Stamp Gang. Now you have a decision to make. You can either go through and glue all the wallpaper down or glue it down as you embellish and for this particular album because it is quite masculine and I know I'm going to be using a lot of chain eyelets brads gears that kind of thing I'm going to opt not to to uh, adhere the wallpaper to the pages yet the reason being is if I add gears and I want to put a brad through Rather than just putting the brad through the gear and gluing it on my paper, I can put the brad right through the paper. And then it's, I usually glue and brad and put a brad through, but then it's, you know, I don't know. I just think it's a, a better way of putting your album together. It's going to last a lot longer if something is, you know, mechanically bonded as well as glued down. So... Anyway, I thought I would still flip through the album and just show you what I chose on all the different pages because I didn't show you the complete process. So this is page one, and no, I have not put the tags back in yet. So this is page one, and I'm just going to stick that in there so it doesn't get lost. My next spread... Yeah. 
And yes, I'm sorry. I am in a tight spot, so I'm going to have to go back and forth. So that's the right-hand page. This is the left-hand page. You can see that I spritzed this page. And then when you open it up, I opted to choose those two papers. Going this way, I've got the uh, stamp paper on the right. And here, I know it's difficult to see, but you can see what I try to do is balance everything as I go. You want the colors balanced, you want the pattern size balanced. If, it, if you had a spread that had the same size pattern on it, they would compete and they would look really weird and awkward. Whereas you'll notice, you know, I've got a medium sized pattern. Well, I guess I would consider this large, a large sized pattern. And this here is basically just a, a full, I would consider this a solid, even though there's some pictures in the side. And here, maybe this is a good spread for me to kind of explain to you what I mean. So we have two large patterns here and a small pattern. This here is also a small pattern, almost a solid. Now if I had these two next to each other, it doesn't look quite as good, does it? Because the two patterns are approximately the same size and your eye doesn't know where to go. So anyway, um, getting into a little bit of extra detail here, just trying to explain some of the way, my thought process and a little bit of design theory that I use when I put together a mini album. So on this side, I've got those two papers. And then when you open it up, and as I choose the papers, I always look at the whole spread. Like I look to make sure this looks okay, then I close it, make sure this looks okay. You know, I try to coordinate everything together and sometimes it's a bit tricky. So here you can see I have a large size pattern and a solid over here when I open it up. And this is an example of, of like the colors. This one's kind of a light to medium tone, light to medium tone, dark. And here you can see I've gone light, light with medium tones. And this one here, I spritzed quite a bit. I know it's a little awkward because I don't have anything glued down, but trust me, you'll see as we go through um, how beneficial it is to maybe not glue your pages down until you're finished designing um, what the spread should look like. And I'm just going through this in case you're wanting to, you know, copy the pattern paper or use the same paper collection and use the same papers I've used on the, on the pages. I just want to make sure that you can see which design paper I chose on each of the pages. this one up. This paper on the left there. And you can see what I did with the spritzing as well. Like I did just the one side here when you know, open it up. It's not the middle one, it's the far one that spritzed. So I mean I use that theory on whether it's patterns, colors, uh, distressing, all that kind of stuff. Last, but certainly not least, this is the last page. So 
So yeah, so that's my album ready to start embellishing. So once I've got all my wallpapers there sorted out, then I go to my tags and I start adding pattern paper to my tags. And of course, I always try to coordinate same kind of design principles as I go through the album here. Now, one little thing, if you recall, I showed you the tiny little bit of 12 by 12 paper I had left. I kind of hinted that there's like creative opportunities. This is one of the creative opportunities I was talking about or thinking about. We have a lot of these tags that are... I forget how big they're at like we're looking at eight inches by five and a half or so. Six by six paper clearly is not going to fill that up. So what are we gonna do? I mean you can use just plain solid cardstock if you like, which I will use some throughout. Um, you can make your own pattern paper by, you know, using stamps and perfect pearls and stuff like that. Um, and I'm probably going to be doing a little bit of that, just a little bit of a spoiler there. Um, I'm going to kind of go all out on this album. And I might add some extra tags here and there and do all sorts of fun techniques and we'll go over those together. So I thought that would be a fun thing to do. And back to the tag, third option is who says you have to mat this in one piece? So what I'm going to do for some of them is I'm going to do two sections. I'm going to do a larger section with, a, with the pattern paper and then I'll do a smaller section that is like a light color paper for journaling, something like that. So. That is, I think, what I'm going to do with some of it. Okay, so I've made a decision with regards to the matting on my tags throughout the mini album. I do want to keep it relatively consistent throughout the album. Um, I think it just flows better that way. So I will go through and I will show you exactly what I've decided to do on all the tags and give you... Uh, measurements for all the matting. So this tag in here, um, I'm just going to put, you know, the pattern paper on the outside and white, or actually this is a cream cardstock on the inside. Um, you can journal or just mat with, or put pictures in there, it doesn't matter. So these measure four inches wide by five and a quarter inches tall. So that's for, there's three of these throughout the album. They're on the front of pages one, three, and five. And then there's these larger tags. Now these larger tags flow throughout the album and I decided to do them in two different ways actually. The ones that tuck into the pages are gonna be different than the ones that tuck into the ends. So the ones that tuck into the pages, um, and these tags are five and a half by eight inches. I've decided to do two photo mats on the one side. Um, I think you could fit three by five photos in here nicely. So each of these mats here measure three and three quarters by five and a quarter. And then on the back side of these I've just cut a solid piece of craft card stock and we'll be doing some fun techniques to that um, later on here. So this is five and a quarter by seven and three quarters inches. Now for all the tags that tuck into the ends of the pages I decided to do them a little bit more differently. On the one side I am going to have a mat that will suit a 3x5 photo and then a cream space where you can 
do some journaling and stuff like that. So this mat is three and a quarter by five and a quarter inches. And this guy here, of course, is going to be five and a quarter tall by four and a quarter wide. And the back, solid uh, card or craft cardstock again. So this will be five and a quarter by seven and three quarters. Stick this in here. Sorry, guys. I guess I could have just thrown it to the side, but I don't want to lose where I've chosen for some pattern papers to go. So when you flip over onto the back of pages 1, 3, and 5, um, there's nothing to worry about. Those are just full spreads. The front of pages 2, 4, and 6 are... Sorry, I'm blocking a little bit of my light. These will have the large tags, and I'm going to do those exactly the same as these. Have the craft card stock on the back with the two mats, and I already forget the size. They're five and a quarter by three and three quarters each. So that's what I'm going to do in there. Of course, the ends we already went over. Now over here, if you recall, we had to glue this edge of the pocket down, which means that the tag is not quite as tall. Um, I am going to do the tags the same as what I've got on the other pages, you know, with the two photo mats. Uh, so it'll be three and three quarter inches wide for two photo mats, and then the height will be a little bit different. It'll just be five inches tall for the height. And last but certainly not least we have a tag that goes in this pocket here and I've decided for that one to be consistent with all the other tags I'm going to go with solid craft card stock on the one side and solid pattern paper on the other so this will measure five and a quarter inches by five and a half inches for all the matting there. So I've already cut all my plain cardstock. I've, you can see, I've started picking out uh, some of the matting for the tags. So I'm just gonna continue working away at choosing matting, speed up the film, and hopefully you can see what I what I'm doing in the camera. I know it's a very small space. If it doesn't work out, I won't be speeding up the film. I'll just cut to um, the end and I'll sh we'll finish off the tags together. So hopefully it works out. Okay, so now I'm done picking all the papers for my tags. Um, there's, this is about all I have left from the 12 by 12. And, oh, here's another piece of the 12 by 12. And the rest, this is all that's left from the six by six papers. So that took a ton of paper. And actually, um, what I had to do partway through was I was running out of pattern paper fast. So I went through my paper stash and I found some bow bunny paper that of course it all coordinates right so I found 
these three papers, so you can see they all coordinate nicely with this paper. So I used some of this. Sometimes I used um, this kind of flourishy side and sometimes I used the polka dotted side and I used it consistently throughout the album so it helped kind of fill in the gaps where I didn't have enough pattern paper but this still looks like it could be part of the paper collection. Um, so the three colors I used are chocolate vintage, gingerbread vintage, and decaf vintage. So in case you're wondering there. And I used, you know, a sheet of the lightest one. This is what I have left from the medium. And I didn't use very much of the dark one, but that's okay. So now that I have all my papers chosen, I am yet again going to flip to the front of my album. And I'm going to go through on every tag. I do... Um, adhere all the wallpapers for the tags down right away because I don't typically add any or much additional embellishments to the tags primarily because you know you're pulling them in and out of pockets you don't want them to catch on things that's the big thing so of course I've got to round the corners distress all the edges and stick them down okay so I'm almost done um, doing all the rounding on my corners. I just wanted to show you what I did. Now throughout the album I chose to use the scallop punch and as you know I did the same for the base of the tags. Now if I were to use the scallop punch on all the matting for the tags, snore boring right? Um, it's good to be consistent throughout your album but you want to add just a little point of interest here and there. You know what, when people are flipping through your album, they will notice. They won't be able to put it in words, but they'll it'll blow them away. So it's worth taking the extra time to do these things. So what I ended up doing, for the mats on the tags, you can see here, I think this works beautifully every time. You've got the scallop, and then this, I use my deco and stub punch for the corners and you actually have to punch each corner twice. Um, I know I'm crazy but I told you I was going all out with this album. Um, I think if I do more go all out you'll be learning more as well. So I'm going to show you how I punch the corners. Now I first use the stub side and I'll go all around the entire tag. And then if you flip it over, let's see if I can get this in the camera. What you can do is you see those two little corners there? You can punch those two little corners out. I'm tr sorry, I'm trying to line it up. And you end up with that. You can see I didn't line it up properly there. It's kind of hard to do through the camera, but. That one's better. But of course you couldn't see me lining it up because I was not doing it in the ca camera. Here we go. Like that. And so you go from that to that. Sorry, a little bit extra to that. So I think it makes a big difference. Another thing I wanted to comment on, it's not really about this mini album, but if you guys have had your corner chompers for a long time, like I have, I was going through and it was getting stuck, right? It'll stick and then it'll just release, or I have to open it up, and that becomes a royal pain in the butt. So what I do when that happens, it's typically these blades in here have to be lubricated. Now, don't use a wet oil, because if you do, you're just going to get oil all over your pages. I actually have this, um, we call it Pepe Lube. I use it for lubricating my jewelry saw blades. There's another one, it's called Burr Life. Ask your husband, he might have like a solid, it's like a solid stick almost. It's like a 
almost feels like a deodorant stick. And um, I just, you know, rub a little on my finger. Like you can see there's not much residue. And I just rub it right on the blades. That's all you have to do. And then just work it. And it starts working like brand new. So little tip from Monique today. Okay, so I've been thinking about these tags as I was punching the corners um, because obviously it doesn't take much thought to do that. And I have decided that I will only ink the edges of the matting on the tags. Partially because we got a lot of rattiness going on here already. Plus, my mind's starting to think starting to work ahead a little bit. I want to add some tags and maybe put, you know, some strings on them and stuff and that's going to be ratty. So we're going to keep the tags nice and clean. At least I am. Um, so I'll just ink the edges of, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the pattern paper. I'm leaving the, the cream and the craft card stock alone for now. And I'm just going to go through, because I've got to deal with some of this loose paper here. So I'm going to do that. Once I'm done inking all of the edges, um, I'll flip through my mini album. You remember how I said that I, I spritzed some of them? I'm going to do the same with some of the mats for the tags. So I will add some spritzing to some of the tags. And it'll just be random throughout the album. Um... And then I will come back and I will show you how I adhere the wallpaper onto the tags, get it all nicely centered. See you soon. Okay, so I have done inking all the pattern paper for my tags. I have left the craft cardstock and the cream cardstock alone uh, because we'll do some fun stuff with those after. But I just wanted to take a minute to show you exactly how I add this spritzing to my card to my cardstock. I'm sure you guys have done it before, but I figure why not be thorough, right? So I'm using the same colors as I did throughout the mini album. I've got the Buccaneer Bay Blue Moon Shadow Mist and the uh, Dark Chocolate Truffle um, Starburst Spray. So what I do is I squeeze the sprayer with one hand and slowly press with my other hand. And so I don't get a nice clean spray, it just, you know, it's really jittery. And I tend to squeeze from the top, for me it's easier. So I'm squeezing sideways and just slowly squeezing down on the uh, trigger there. So I think that's good. And you probably want to use your craft mat, not your rubber cutting mat. And I just do both colors before drying. And then I take my heat tool and dry it because I'm impatient. Heating on your cutting mat will warp it a little bit. You can tell I'm not too anxious about that. We'll finish doing this and then I'll come back and show you how I center my wallpaper on my takes. Okay, so I'm done preparing all of the patterned papers. Now, I'm not gonna glue down any of the cream or craft card stock because we're going to have fun with those before we stick them down. But I just need to deal with some of this loose paper. So I use quarter inch wide score tape. And I may have said this before, I'm not sure, because it's actually taking me several days to <laughs> record this tutorial. Uh, but, I mean, I, I used to use my ATG gun, and I stopped doing that for a couple of reasons. First reason is um, that the ATG adhesive is not as strong as the score tape. And the second reason 
is that the score tape is less expensive than the ATG adhesive. So I just stopped using my ATG gun and use pretty much only score tape. So I always add a stripe around all the edges and then one in the center. Okay, so let me figure out which way is up. Okay. So what I do is I just remove this center strip and I'm actually going to remove these paper from inside because I want this to lay flatter. So I remove the center strip and the center strip only because then you can lay it down and look the backing on the on the score tape all around the edges keeps the center lifted up high enough so that you can slide it around course I mean you don't want to be pressing down in the center you want to be careful so I kind of center it where I want then I press the center and you know what it's stuck it's not moving anywhere then I peel back the corner of all the edges and take the backing off so I don't know I've never seen anyone do it this way but it doesn't mean nobody else does it's just my little trick for getting your wallpaper nicely centered on your tags because if you have all the backing off and you're trying to hold it, I don't know, just not fun. This is way, way easier. So let me show you again to make sure I have. And I just lightly set it on there. See, and sometimes the center does catch. And that was because my tag paper was slightly curved like that. Um, typically, though, if it does stick, it's not stuck so hard that you can't remove it. And worst case scenario, because I have still made mistakes, is undo. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this stuff. This is every scrapbooker must own this. It's amazing. You could use it to remove score tape. Um, score tape is really the only thing I've tried it on and you can use it even on photos and it doesn't ruin them. Dries really quickly and once it's dry the score tape is still usable. You don't even have to replace the score tape on the back of your photos. It's crazy. Amazing stuff. Down and look at that. Two pretty much perfectly centered pieces of wallpaper on that tag. So I'm gonna go through and adhere all the other patterned cardstock onto my tag bases and leave the cream and the craft unstuck, no score tape on the back. Okay, I am back and I have adhered all my pattern paper onto my tags here. I left the cream and craft cardstock untouched. We'll get onto that next. However, I think for this week we have run out of time. Um, I was hoping to go over more than cutting the wallpaper for the tags in the, in the mini album, but I think we covered a lot of other ground as well. Um, we not only went over the dimensions for all your pattern paper, we went over how to accommodate angles and notches when when matting your paper. We went over a few design principles, went over, we talked about balance a little bit, talked about um, unity, you know, to make your album look cohesive. We also talked about variety to, to make it a little bit more interesting as well. So went over those, showed you how I create the splatters on my pages. Also went over a little trick that I use to center all the pattern paper on my tags and pages. And last but not least, we kind of went a little bit off topic, but we, but we talked about how to maintain your corner chompers when they get sticky. So I think we learned a lot. Anyways, 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful and I hope you're sticking with me. Um, you'll find that it'll take you a while to get all this stuff done that we did this week. See you next week. Ciao.